Biochar, as you saw from Wei's presentation, is produced by pyrolyzing organic matter. It's a byproduct of biofuel production, and if biofuels ever catch on, we're going to have lots of biochar to do something with. Fortunately, biochar is very stable. Again, as Wei mentioned, it can be used for carbon sequestration, and it's a good soil amendment. Unfortunately, biochar contains polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, <coughs> which are carcinogenic. The PAH content depends on how the biochar was produced. Here are some PAHs you may be familiar with. Uh, naphthalene is what mothballs are made out of. Benzoapyrene is a carcinogenic component of smoke. 16 PAHs are priority pollutants. So, the fate of biochar, whether it's going to be a, a useful product or a hazardous waste, uh, depends in large part on the PAHs uh, in, uh, that are produced, inevitably. Our hypotheses are that the total PAH content really doesn't tell the story of uh, biochar uh, hazard. It depends on how tightly they're bound and uh, whether they're available, bioavailable. So we're going to be working with biochar made from corn stover, that is leaves and stalks after corn harvest, uh, and we're uh, doing experiments on sorption and uh, mild extraction. This is a limited project, so we're going to be working with one compound, pyrene. Uh, fortunately, fluorescence is very sensitive for dissolved pyrene. This makes our experiments uh, much easier than if we we're using HPLC. Our extractions are done with something called HPCD, the uh, active ingredient in Procter & Gamble's Febreze. HPCD extractable uh, by PAHs correlate very well with bioavailability. HPCD is basically a molecular donut with uh, hydrophobic interior that's just about the right size for PAH molecules. We uh, did preliminary experiments with wood char because at the beginning of the project, corn stover wasn't available. Uh, this was a good opportunity to work out our techniques. There's a little bit of uh, pyrene in the char. Here are our sorption results. I plotted uh, sorbed pyrene on the y-axis and versus dissolved pyrene on the x-axis, log-log plot, a nice straight line. Uh, that means that a, a Langmuir isotherm fits the data very nicely. And these parameters are typical of uh, pyrene on wood char. So this gives us some uh, confidence in our results. The next slide shows uh, HPCD extraction. Uh, Extractable pyrene is roughly linearly related to sorbed pyrene and extrapolating back to the native pyrene concentration, it's about 10 to 20 percent extractable. So our hypotheses are confirmed. Uh, biochar holds on to the PAHs uh, very tightly and not very much is extractable. And we've started. Uh, the, uh, the main part of the project, we've already pyrolyzed one batch of, uh, of Stover and uh, we're getting ready to do our experiments with that. Um, <coughs> HPCD uh, extractable uh, PAHs uh, should be a part of uh, bioavailability with uh, plants. It's all been, already been used with animals, but uh, it should be plants too. Uh, absorption studies, I can think of two ways uh, that these uh, can be used. Uh, one is uh, determining the uh, biochar content of soil for verifying uh, carbon credits. Uh, here, uh, this group has used it uh, very successfully, uh, determining black carbon content of sediments. Uh, the, the fluorescence method is, is really very convenient for that. And the other is uh, sediment remediation. Uh, this was a paper about using activated carbon to, uh, to tie up uh, hydrophobic contaminants. Uh, the authors point out, though, 
that biochar could be a, uh, an, an economical alternative.